In the Quran, the Islamic holy book, permission to fight is given to those who have been attacked by non-Muslims or those who have been driven out of their homes unjustly. In these cases, Muslims are required to defend their religious beliefs by fighting a jihad or holy war. The word mujahideen means those who fight for the faith. The United States opportunistically supported the mujahideen, the jihad in Afghanistan. When that jihad was against the Soviet Union, billions of dollars of money, billions of dollars of armaments poured into Afghanistan. The CIA agents went all over the Muslim world recruiting people to go to Afghanistan. They recruited in Algeria, they recruited in Egypt, they recruited in Sudan. Volunteers arrived from all over the Muslim world to fight the great jihad against the evil empire. Well, the evil empire was clobbered in Afghanistan, took a beating. But then what? There is an Islamic blowback. The blowback of this Islamism is now towards the West. It is creating problems for Western policies itself. You don't opportunistically encourage, support, aid, consolidate forces that you do not honestly believe are progressive, liable to bring justice, liable to bring peace into a people or a country. By opportunistically supporting them for the first time in history, you have Islamism as an international phenomenon and as an armed phenomenon. Never, you never had that in Islamic history. You had some group emerging in one country, one place, one region. This pan-Islamic phenomenon of people converging from all over, it has been, it, it begins, it begins, this, its a structure was created and provided by the CIA's covert operation and the Pakistani mil secret services covert operation in Afghanistan. And now everybody complains about it. The New York Times and uh, the television, uh, uh, CBS and NBC all talk about the threat of Islamism. But they are the ones who created it. If it's a monster, it's your monster. sure all the, the people in the world and also all the American understand we are not the ter terrorists. We are a very proud nation. We are a very proud pe people. We do not be, we do not want to be called as a terrorist. We, we are not. And we don't support them. If a group get together Training camps have been set up by the Mujahideen parties to train thousands of new Mujahideen recruits. Brigadier Safi, who was himself trained in the Soviet Union, England and the U.S., is in charge of this camp. The training is designed to produce small, highly effective groups of Afghan commandos to carry out destructive missions against Soviet and Afghan government installations. The recruits are taught the tactics of both rural and urban guerrilla warfare. It's almost ready bomb if you take in Kabul or any major town. There is a lot of checkpoint. It's almost impossible to take it inside. But what we do, we make it <coughs> themselves. Once we train them and he goes to his house or any rent house inside major town. And he go to shop, 
and buy just local building material, which is legal, and nobody check you, nobody, even if check you, you say, well, you, you need it for your own house. We did not support them with the money, with the weapons, with how they get. After knowing all this uh, <laughs> much weapon, all this much uh, uh, money is in the hand of these people over there at that time with the Russian pool up, they should have, like in Bosnia, the world get engaged and they move the uh, international uh, army, like uh, NATO. You know. They should have done that in Afghanistan also. They shouldn't let it just say, okay, you, you guys make a decision. No, no, no. They should get engaged there and they should understand the need of innocent people, Afghans, which, which they need, what they want. Not to just uh, anybody come and say, okay, <laughs> I do something here and they do all this damage. The very last part of your question, sir, would it make sense to give selective support uh, from the United States to those elements in the resistance that were more sympathetic to human rights efforts? Is that correct, sir? That was my understanding, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, to your question, if I understood it correctly, does it make sense to funnel to specific groups in the uh, resistance, those with a better record, uh, more open to uh, promptings on behalf of human rights. In all honesty, sir, I don't think uh, that that's a judgment that we could easily make uh, as a government. Our aid, in any event, let me assure you, our aid is being given in Pakistan uh, to the refugees in the camps in Pakistan. It's uh, being given across the border in Afghanistan, where it is admitted, uh, where is it administered by the uh, resistance committees. And we have not sought to play uh, favorites among the seven parties making up those committees because for us the all-important goal at the moment is to support the Afghan cause and the resistance leadership which as I said in answer to earlier questions is uh, increasingly working towards a unified policy and a uh, coherent coordinated action so it would not make no sense uh, I believe even in the context of if one were able to choose a party more sympathetic to human rights on the side of the resistance, among the resistance parties, it wouldn't make sense to pick and choose for the, by the outside world at this point in history. It would be divisive. The most promising recruits are taught advanced commando tactics. Each of these men will lead hit-and-run bombing operations inside Kabul and other major Afghan towns. They will destroy electric power stations, communication lines, and government supply depots. Mujahideen target the Kabul Polytechnic Institute. So, I hope, I hope when, when today the action take place in my country, they should understand we Afghans, we are with the world. We are not somebody which disrespect them. They, to, they don't to, to not love them. We love all Americans, all the Europeans, all the people who help us out during the uh, time which we were engaged with the communists and their, with the Russians. At this point, still all our feeling is with the same with all these people which suffering, which they have lost their loved ones. This tragedy you see right here in the Pentagon, at the World Trade Center in, 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 in New York. No, I don't want to, this feeling be among Americans, the Afghans. Can you just, just read for me what it says? Well, uh, this is the September 11, uh, 2001 which I was sitting uh, watching TV and uh, uh, it was about two o'clock in the morning which they were calling which uh, they are going to take a position 
to go inside Afghanistan. And my mind went through this, which if they go inside Afghanistan, and all these innocent people, this is the, the picture which I am taking uh, uh, myself, all these innocent people, what about them? You see, and this is how they are, they are feeling also, which I create some words and I put them together and I made this just about that our thoughts and prayers are with you with the innocent victim and all American and the world we are deeply saddened by this tragic events and then please be careful I am not at fault please be careful I hear you are coming please be careful you are coming, take the evil away. Please be careful, take him, take them all and make the world happy and safe. Please be careful, I do not have a shelter to save me. Please be careful, I do not have food or water. Please be careful, I do not have hospital or medicine. Please. Turn the light on in our darkness. I need a respectful, lawful government, justice, education, care, and uh, healing for the pain I have uh, been suffering since 1977. Do not simply forget me. Do not let evil play with my life. Please do not leave my life in jeopardy. Please. Free me, free my country, free uh, from the these hit, hateful occupiers. I am an innocent Afghan, and I am a very proud Afghan. My heart is with you, and your pain is mine. God bless America. God bless all innocent people around the world. This is uh, what I have uh, created. This is what I have. All we want to do is just talk to you just for a second. Okay, Come on up here with me. Where is it? Sir. Not now. Stand back. I'll stay here. Sir. Go back. Being asked I'm going to go tell you one more right time. Now. Okay. Wherever you want me. That way. Watch behind you. Walk around. There you go. Walk around. Now go that way. I want you underneath that Columbia Pike sign. I'm only gonna tell you one more time, that's it. This is the warning. Walk. March 20th, President Reagan honored the brave struggle of the resistance by signing a proclamation designating March 21st as Afghanistan Day. We agree uh, that there can be no compromise on the goal of Afghan independence. And that means the total withdrawal of all Soviet forces and the full self-determination of the Afghan people. No other settlement will end that war. This commander who died, he he called for America a long time. 
when he was in Paris about three months ago, he called for the American government to get involved. Otherwise, you know, this, the, the terrorist groups are invading the country, and it will have an effect not only in Afghanistan, but even the U.S. That's what he exactly said, but nobody listened to him. Well, this was uh, back in April, early April of 2001, uh, when Ahmad Shah Massoud came uh, to Paris for the first time to the West. And uh, at this press conference, uh, I had the opportunity to ask him about uh, what his message would be for the new American administration. Uh, this was just a few months after President Bush had taken office. And Commander Massoud surprisingly uh, talked about the usual issues uh, of terrorism and uh, human rights and the threat of the Pakistani policy in Afghanistan. But then, at the very end, he said, uh, my specific message to the American administration, President Bush, is that uh, this threat of terrorism, which exists in Afghanistan today and is threatening the Afghan people and uh, countries in the region, will eventually come and haunt the United States if it doesn't take some very serious measures to counteract. Did you get any response from the administration? The U.S. administration at the time uh, did not have any response. When I came back, I did call the State Department and ask them about uh, whether uh, there was a response to it. And they, they said, well, we are against terrorism and we are aware of what is going on, but nothing specific. And uh, myself, I just confuse, uh, I just confuse about uh, our foreign policy in America, mm -hmm. because uh, Taliban support by Pakistan, Pakistani soldier who support pa uh, Taliban and Pakistani government who recognize Taliban, and uh, support them as a soldiers and foes and everything. And Saudi Arabia government, another government who support Taliban, give them a free gas. In United Arab Emirates, another country which is support Taliban, give them a blank check. In the three country, best friend of Taliban and enemy of uh, best friend of America and best friend of uh, Taliban and Americas against Taliban. And uh, this kind of uh, strategy just uh, make me confuse how United uh, States against Bin Laden and Taliban and best friend of Saudi Arabia and Pakistan.
here at the podium, so all you people involved in organizing, please come up here. to Pakistan in October of 2001 and I just recently went to Afghanistan in uh, November 2000, well 2002, yes. <laughs> and I can tell you that uh, comparison, in, in comparison to the, the, the attitude of people, I could find helplessness now, disappointment, a lot of people were expecting a lot of difference in, the, in terms of re-infrastructure, in terms of opportunities for, for women and men, in terms of employment opportunities. And now uh, people are still hungry, uh, are still starving, there are still refugee camps that doesn't have any infrastructure whatsoever. And they are, they are very disappointed and, and getting very impatient with the lack of infrastructure building or commitments in terms of rebuilding Afghanistan. Well, what's this information that the Bush administration gives that is bringing prosperity and democracy to the countries? Well, listen, no one disputes the fact that rebuilding a country is a process and that it's not a magical trick and that it doesn't happen overnight. But also no one disputes the fact, whoever goes to Afghanistan, that there is very little happening in Afghanistan in terms of development and in terms of infrastructure building. You talk to any non-governmental organization, you even talk to the UN, and everyone complains about the lack of resources that are being provided to Afghanistan, to the rebuilding of Afghanistan. And that is a dangerous, uh, dangerous thing to do for our own national security. From a nationalistic perspective, we should help Afghanistan much more than what we're doing now. When you say we, do you mean the United America. States? Absolutely. Um, and can you just expand on that? What, what do you mean that it's in our own national security to expand on that? Well, if we are, if we are promising, first for in setting up precedents, if we are promising that we go to countries and we help them to rebuild, then we better act on it. Then we better re do it because otherwise everyone is becoming, other countries would never ever believe us, would never believe that our intentions uh, of helping them rebuild and all of that. So first we have to act on what we promise. That's first. The second thing is you leave Afghanistan with no infrastructure, with very little resources to rebuild, and you bet you people are get, will get frustrated, the warlords will re-emerge again, and the whole trouble that we try to uh, you know, supposedly prevent it will emerge back. That's economic rebuilding is, is, is in, fundamental in security and peace. Give people jobs and give them normal lives. When I ask women in Afghanistan, what do you want? They say, we want normal lives. And when I ask them, what do you mean by normal lives? They want a roof on top of their head. They want their husbands not dying in war and not fighting in any war. They want to be able to send their children to school and they want to eat three meals a day. They are not asking for much let us give them these resources to help them accomplish this. And I bet you no one would want to go to war. No one would want to destroy that norma normalcy that they're looking for. So our lack of support to them is instrumental in terms of creating any tension uh, there again. I was uh, uh, for a long time in service, uh, political and administration service in my country. I was president of uh, Kabul University and minister for national planning and deputy prime minister. And I had also to pay my duty for political reasons uh, as a prisoner in the communism regime. And uh, outside of my country, I've tried to uh, help uh, as much as I could uh, for jihad and unifying the different uh, 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 different uh, groups of uh, mujahideen uh, without uh, any success. The tragedy of 11 of September uh, created a, a tremendous pressure on the administration of the United States to do something. 
to satisfy the public opinion that something has happened. This is perhaps also uh, the aim of the uh, producer of this tragedy uh, was this aim uh, to, to, op to bring uh, the United States administration under pressure to do something which would be not correct. But uh, still, I believe uh, the, the uh, evaluation of values uh, on base of which the community of the United States exists and uh, uh, is, has been developed requires uh, certain uh, requires uh, the, uh, the, uh, the acceptance of certain limits of action and um, the m most important thing is that uh, it shouldn't be acted in a way that the radicalism among Afghans and Muslims will uh, rise and uh, uh, not uh, the idea uh, flourish that uh, there is a, a clash between uh, Occident and Muslim countries if uh, the actions among the uh, radical Muslims or others will uh, take over, uh, take a, a more dangerous situation, it exists the possibility that the reaction among others will be so hard that as byproduct of their, these clashes, the people of, of Afghanistan suffers, or if uh, as a result of uh, the actions in Iraq and other Arabic uh, countries, uh, the danger exists that the, uh, the, uh, uh, the existence of uh, certain countries will be endangered. Uh, we will be also uh, uh, perhaps uh, a matter of uh, this endangerment uh, to, uh, to lose your existence or a part of our uh, territory to others or to, uh, to suffer under a new kind of revolution among uh, the people of Afghanistan. But it is necessary to think which common values exist and uh, which bind common binding uh, exist and which common binding should be uh, promoted for the future. And after all, the danger which exists from the new technology uh, which leads to warfare and which, uh, uh, which uh, have as a result the destruction of the uh, harmony of the world and therefore to find a solution uh, to avoid uh, war in general, to find a solution uh, uh, that uh, the mankind uh, be, uh, would be enabled uh, to find uh, peaceful uh, understanding among each other. You were imprisoned by the Soviet regime. Yes. You've struggled with the Mujahideen to try to bring peace to your country. Yes. You've talked about that process as a jihad. Could you talk about what that means to you? Well, uh, I believe uh, uh, anybody who, had, who, who was lucky uh, to have better position uh, in comparison to many compatriots and to many people who had uh, perhaps more ability than he had, uh, it is the obligation to do something uh, to, to repay uh, this luck which one had. Uh, and uh, if you have the feeling that uh, you have done something, this gives you the satisfaction. And if you uh, have the feeling that you failed to do this, this uh, is also a, a kind of pain. So therefore, uh, what I did was uh, just uh, 
fulfilling fulfillment of the uh, obligation which resulted from the luck which I had in comparison of many of my compatriots in my life. And what is that struggle? Well, it is, uh, it is uh, the uh, part participation and the happiness in the, ha in the process which should lead to happiness of people and to reduce their pain. Uh, it is necessary even if it is very in humble uh, category to do s something in that uh, direction. <laughs> Witness, what do you have to say? When I <clears throat> look around and I see so much green, which is the color of hope, I feel truly that there's hope. A school like this being built way up here. 20,000 people, they tell me, live The size of the school is impressive. The effort that is being put in, the hope that is given to these villagers that are way up here in the mountains, yeah. makes me feel very, very, very hopeful for the situation. Hope to the people for education, showing them that they're cared for by the outside world, because this is a a project that's being paid for by the government of the Japanese. The Swiss are evidently active up here, the Japanese, and I hope that the Americans can put something up here also. So, nice. Thank you very much. I'm Nick, and I'm a teacher here. I'm teaching English for three weeks. Three weeks? From yes. Where? From America. What part? Um, Maryland. It's right by Washington, D.C. You're from Maryland. Uh, uh, how was your experience since you came to Afghanistan? Um, I like it a lot. It's a lot different than America. It's hot and, and um, yeah, it's a good experience. It's a good experience. And what is your experience with these children? Um, well, I'm, I'm learning more English, actually, and I'm learning how to teach them, and it's really hard to teach them because I'm not used to teaching. I'm used to being taught. I'm used to being a student. I see. But uh, what is the outcome from your point of view? What, how do you see, since you have come to Afghanistan, how do you see the future in this country? Uh, <laughs> um, I think that eventually it will turn out okay and they will be well educated and be successful in the future. If you be uh, question someone sometime in America and you uh, be in front of uh, President Bush, what would be your uh, thought and work to tell him what would you say about Afghanistan? <laughs> okay, um... I would tell him that he should come here and see, see, see the devastation here and um, that he should actually do something about it. <laughs>